guys, look at the red belly Baku. I think I'm gonna give him a little bit of Bagoy's food, a little chick leg to see what happens. Oh! Go on. Beautiful pygmy mulga, the pygmy king brown. And he's such a darling little snake. I love him so much. This snake is one of the most venomous snakes in the snake room. Why is it so venomous? Because it needs neurotoxic venom to take down its prey fast. Hey, look how beautiful the snake is as well. Ooh, ooh, nice and easy. Look at that beautiful Indian cobra. I mean, look at the whites breaking through the brown. That is a stellar looking snake. What is going on, my beautiful people? I'm just hanging out with the beautiful Eastern Dimeback rattlesnakes. They finished soaking in their necks, which is the treatment we use for mites. And now we're just trying to get all that necks off of them, give them a nice good soak, rinse it off of them, and now we're gonna put them right back into their enclosure. Nice paper towel, nice and simple, so we can make sure we keep an eye on them. And if any mites start to die and fall off, we'll see it on the, the paper towel right there. And also we got a nice fresh bowl of water so they can hydrate. And then we're gonna treat them one more time because uh, we've already done the second dose, so this is gonna be one more time for a third round of nicks after that. So let me get out this female. And we're just trying to make sure everyone's nice and comfortable, they're getting hydrated, and they're good to go, because of course we cannot let them drink that nicks. So we gotta make sure we hold off on the water while they're getting treated. But now, now it's time to relax, sit on the paper towel. Hopefully all those mites are starting to fall off and they'll be nice and comfortable so they don't have to be so irritated with those little blood suckers underneath their scales. They're hiding in the crevasses. Mm. All right, let me get that rattle in there. Nice and easy. Now let's get the lock and make sure it's nice and secure. All right, beautiful people. Now what we have to do is a lot of cleaning, just basic cleaning. These guys don't have mites, but we do have to clean the Indian Cobra. We have to clean Mr. Brown, the brown snake, also known as the King Brown, Pygmy King Brown, also known as the Pygmy Mulga. What's a Mulga? A Mulga is a bush in Australia that gets old cracks and leaves lots of little crevasses for these little animals to hide. So the Mulga is named after that bush in Australia that it lives in. You can see the Mulga's hanging out right there. He's been shedding, he's been pooping like crazy, and he's grown like a little weed. But because he's a Pygmy Mulga, he won't get as big as his larger cousin, the True Mulga. And the Mulga that gets eight feet long being one of the biggest venomous snakes in Australia. Second largest venom yield of any venomous snake in Australia, second to the taipan, the coastal taipan. All right, so let's clean Mr. Brown, clean this beautiful Indian cobra down here. It needs a good deep cleaning. And then we're gonna clean our other Indian cobra, our big male right here. We'll give them all a little inspection, making sure they're all good to go, they're nice and cleaned up, and they're living the best lives here in captivity. guys we're gonna take out this little mulga hopefully mr. Brown is nice and smooth today ooh, ooh, ooh. relax mr. Brown gotta be real careful because this snake is lightning fast and will throw itself whoop, over its own body and he also likes to shoot out the enclosure really fast as you can see he's very comfortable Let me just make sure I get that tail there we go nice and smooth there we go let's see how he's doing look at him beautiful pygmy mulga the pygmy king brown and he's such a darling little snake. I love him so much. This was, he was a gift from a buddy of mine who retired from venomous keeping. And I've loved this snake ever since. Believe it or not, this snake is actually around like 10 years old now. And this is as big as it's gonna get. The pygmy mulga doesn't get nearly as big as its cousin getting eight feet long. These guys are much smaller. And there's actually multiple species of pygmy mulga around Australia. And there's one more species found in Papua New Guinea. So there's, I think roughly, there's around like four species of pygmy mulga. And this would be palisai. Sudecus palisai, same family as the red belly black snake whoop, 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 and the Colette snake. So they have a very, very potent neurotoxin. Basically everything in Australia is deadly, deadly dangerous when it comes to its venom. No joke, and that's why I love Australia so much. It is so cool to see the collection of Australian lapids build up more and more because we've got the death adder now, we've got the pygmy mulga, and we have the gorgeous Colette snake. Let me get him into his in his little holding container real quick, the little snake holding receptacle. We already cleaned it out after being uh, used for a little soaking tub for those rattlesnakes, so it's nice and clean now. We'll lock this up, nice and secure. All right, let's start cleaning, guys. We got a, a little spicy meatball right back there. That's very nice, look at that. Get a good, get, get a good shot of that, look at that. Gone, give me some skin. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it away. I'm gonna get some fresh water. 
Nice and easy. Not too much to do in here, just a couple of spot cleans. Oh, you hear him in there? He's climbing around and he's falling, he's going crazy. There we go. All right, nice and clean. I'm gonna get some fresh water. I'll be back in uno momento, please. All right, so we're good to go. Fresh water, nice clean area. You can move the mulch around as a form of enrichment so we can pack it down again. There we go. Now let's get them back. Always use a tool to open up a can. Look at him, he's so cool. Such an awesome little snake. Let's see, nice and smooth. There we go, get a little bit further up on my tail. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful snake. Ooh, 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 relax. Relax, nice and easy. Let's get him right back into the enclosure. Nice and easy. Justina, don't even think about it, not a snack. There we go. Beautiful boy. And he'll get a bigger enclosure as everything starts to get upgraded, like I said. King Cobras are getting bigger enclosures, just like this gorgeous forest cobra getting this nice big vision cage. Everyone's gonna have nice spacey enclosures once this place is all finished up. Right now, it's just nice and consolidated, so it's easy to manage. But as time goes on, it's gonna be a real deal Serpentarium. So comment below, what do you wanna see in the Serpentarium? You wanna see sea snakes? I don't think you can get a permit for that. Do you wanna see coastal tie pants? I don't know if you can get those. What about inland tie pants? Maybe. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. All jokes aside, quit playing around, little kid. Hey, stop running around! Okay, all right, guys. We're about to take out the Indian Cobra. This snake is one of the most venomous snakes in the snake room. Why is it so venomous? Because it needs neurotoxic venom. Oh, Jesus is coming to me. It needs neurotoxic venom to take down its prey fast. Not for humans, but sadly, if a human gets bit, it's a big, big deal. Their venom's so potent, it will shut down your diaphragm, making you cease to breathe on your own. So you'd have to get to a hospital immediately to get that anti-venom to bring you back to life. His cage needs a deep clean. I need to get all that mulch out. We need to clean it real good, clean the hide. So we're gonna take him out and we're gonna try and make this real smooth. I'm kind of in a little cornered area. You know what? I'm gonna make this a little bit safer. Give me one second. I'm gonna take this enclosure and I'm gonna put it right over here because that's how much space I believe I'm gonna need for this guy. He can be a little bit sketchy sometimes and we wanna make sure we have enough space to work. There we go. Ooh. Beautiful Indian cobra. This guy ate not too long ago either. Let me see if I can smoothly get him out. He's very defensive, way more defensive than the other Indian cobra I have. Ooh, nice and easy. Look how beautiful the snake is as well. Ooh, ooh, nice and easy. Look at that beautiful Indian cobra. I mean, look at the whites breaking through the brown. That is a stellar looking snake. And also a very defensive snake. I gotta be real careful. This guy likes to reverse right off the hook, which is a very good adaptation or technique to use when you're hunting in rat burrows in India on the banks. These guys can go into tight little crevasses and pull themselves out in no problem. Look at that, he is all over the place. You gonna show us that beautiful hood? Indian cobra, also known as the spectacle cobra because of those beautiful spectacles on the back of the hood. Let me see, ooh, ooh, ooh. look at that, look at that. Very upset, I wanna be very careful that he doesn't just come back on me. This is not a snake I would do too much free handling with just because of how snappy it can be. Look at that, beautiful snake. Nice and easy. Just let him move where he wants. We're gonna let him move right into that can. <clears throat> Holding receptacle. I'm gonna close it up. Nice and easy. Look how beautiful he is. Look at that snake. Such a beautiful animal. And the other Indian cover that I've got is even more beautiful. So we'll check him out in a sec. And him, I'll, I can get away with a lot more handling when it comes to that Indian cover. This one, too spastic, too easy for him to turn around, just bite me on the hand real quick. I could try to predict his next move and dodge that combo, but I have to make sure I make the right choice. Is it worth losing all the biscuits? Is it worth losing everything I've created by taking one little nip from a snake? I'd like to have a record of no snake bites my whole career. That would be great. Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, he went his whole career without one single venomous snake bite. That's pretty good. I would like to have that record. All right, so let's get the glass over here. We're gonna have to clean that. It's just a mess. The Lapidae family members love to rub up on the glass and they get all smeared up. So we'll have to make sure it's nice and clean. And this enclosure is filthy. So I'm just gonna do a complete deep clean. There's shedded skin all over the place. This guy's grown like crazy. He's one of the snakes that I was actually considering rehoming. Still teetering about it. Not sure if I really wanna let him go because 
I had four Indian Cobras originally, I got rid of two of them, and I kept the two best looking ones. And I love the big male we're about to go see after this one, but the one we just took out, you saw how beautiful it is. It's a gorgeous looking snake. So I gotta I got really think about whether or not I wanna rehome that snake. No matter what, wherever these snakes end up, they're gonna live the best lives possible, and that's all that matters. I'm just gonna get all this out. Oh yes, very nice. And I'll see you guys in a split when we get the fresh mulch. Fresh water, fresh mulch, just as fresh as can be. Let's get the mountain back into his enclosure so he can leave the happiest. Oh, hello, buddy. Look how beautiful you are, my bluish hue, white speckled friend. Please come. Oh, not like that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You are very cranky, Cobra. Let me grab your tail. Thank you. Look at that. Oh, like a little pretzel, a little venomous pretzel. All right, let's get him right into the enclosure. That snake has gotten some good size since I got him. He's probably grown at least like a foot and a half. Let's get him right in there. Nice and easy. Perfect. And there's lots of mulch in there so he can bury himself too. They love to bury themselves in the banks of rice fields in India. Locked and secured, good to go. We're gonna take out his beautiful brother. Well, I don't even know if they're truly brothers. This one actually seems like it might be from a different bloodline because of those colors. You're about to see what I mean in one second. This snake is gorgeous. Look at this guy. Beautiful Indian Cobra. Nice and thick. Gotta make sure real gentle. Because this guy ate a couple days back. Looks like he's pooped a good majority of it out. But he's still got a little bit in his belly. Look how beautiful that Indian Cobra is. That is an insane coloration. So look at this. We got a beautiful hood right on the back. Come on. Look at that beautiful hood. It's okay, look at that. And what I'm doing is I'm just making a little bit of motion just to distract the snake and get him focused on my face versus my hand that's holding the snake. And that's just a little bit of how snake charming is done. Usually snake charmers do them with no venom though. They rake out those fangs, they take those venom glands out and they perform a fake show. So basically it's very misleading when these snake charmers pretend they're on the side of the road charming the beast with their tunes. It's not real at all. They don't have ears, they can't listen to the music, they're focused on the motion, and they're not really venomous. They get their fangs raked out. That's animal abuse. And that's what the country of India has noticed. They've taken recognition. They said, hey, this has got to be illegal. We got to stop this nonsense. So today, snake charming shows are illegal in India. And that just shows you that the world is slowly evolving, getting better and better. Because now we look at snakes as having the same rights as a dog. So that's amazing. I love it. Let's get to something else I love. Cleaning those spicy meatballs. Oh, oh boy, hold me back. Hold me back. I'm, I'm going in. I'm going. No, no, hold me back. Oh, I'm just going to get this nice and clean. And I'll see you guys in a gif. Ooh, a little gift. Ooh. Ruth, you want this? What, you want that? Yes. <laughs> uh, no, I'm throwing it away. Ooh, Kobe. All right. Fresh water, good to go, nice and clean, fresh mulch, just a whole new area, enrichment for the snake, new smells, new taste. Let's see, make sure he's just at the bottom. Hello, beautiful. Come on. Oh, 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 going reverse. Nice and smooth. There we go. Oof, that is a beautiful snake, look at that. That is such a gorgeous animal. I love Indian cobras, they're so cool. All right, let's get him into the enclosure. He's like, ooh, all these new smells. Very nice. Let me get your tail on there. There you go. All right, let me get this locked. Nice and secure. All right, beautiful people. Let's see Bagoy fly. Ah! Look at the red belly Paku. I think I'm gonna give him a little bit of Bagoy's food, a little chick leg to see what happens. Oh! Go on, like nothing. Look at him, he's chewing on it like a little chicken wing. Okay, maybe one more leg. Bagoy might be upset, but I'll just defrost more food for him. Let's see if we can hand feed him, actually. Paku! 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 Oh my god, look Paku! Come, 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 come. Come, come. Come, Paku. Come, look. 
Come on. Oh, he got a nipple on my finger. Oh my God, it's so cool. He's needed. Oh, oh, he eats the little chicken wing. They're all like, give me a piece, give me a piece. Oh, I love Baku. All right, maybe we'll feed him just a little more. I can defrost plenty of chicks for, for Bagoy. Let's see, let's, let's feed him a whole chick. Come on, come on, Baku. Come on. Look at them, they're all just hovering there. That is just so cool. Come here, Baku. Come on. They're like so suspect. Come on. Oh, look how they just eyeball it like a dolphin. They just come to the side and they're checking it out. Giving that side eye. Come on. Baku. Come on, Baku. I'm gonna let go. Let's see if they just grab it. That's just too cool. No? You guys don't want it? Oh, he wants it. Oh! Done. All right, let's stop torturing Bagoy, little fly. Bagoy, up, up! Look at that beautiful boy. Ooh! Beast. Love this guy. How you doing, Bagoy? He's like, I can't believe you fed off my chick to the fish. Yes, 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 I know. I have more defrosting. Don't worry, don't worry. Ooh. My big, beautiful boy, Bagoy, the Eurasian Eagle Owl. He's just so cool. Look at him. Oh, what a beast. I hope you're happy. Oh, he's like, let me eat. Let me eat. All right, beautiful people. I had to put Bagoy back because he's just so amped for food right now. He's going, bah, bah. So I just had a little, no, Bagoy, not yet. Stay. Good owl. All right, beautiful people, quick little message. We want to do something new, something that helps you guys stay on track with what we're doing. You can tell that when we post videos, it's all over the place. We might post on Tuesday, we might post on Wednesday. We try to do five days a week and then it ends up being two days or three days or four days. So what we want to do now is so that you guys know exactly when we're going to post videos, we're going to have a fixed schedule. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Three days a week and then we're going to try and hit the second channel again, get a video out once a week on that channel as well. So guys, look forward to Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Chandler's Wildlife coming right at you. Just so we're a little bit more organized and we're not stressing out trying to think of video ideas every day of the week. It's really hectic. I got a lot of work to do, got a big business to run, and it's a lot of wear and tear on Ruth and I. So just to make it a little bit easier, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are going to be Chandler's Wildlife Day. So I will see you guys every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, Bagoy and I are going to go back inside where it's nice and cool in the AC. Bagoy, up, up. My beautiful boy, Bagoy the owl. I love you. Don't worry, I got more food for you. I know, the posse, I know, the posse took your food. I know, I know. Let's go. All right, beautiful people. I will see you on the... You're also a beautiful person. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams. Stay passionate and never let anyone get in the way of that. I love you guys. Go on.